This video is sponsored by Masterworks. Masterworks is a platform for investing in multi-million dollar fine art by names like Banksy, Basquiat and Picasso. We'll talk more about Masterworks at the end of the video, but for now, let's get on with how to simplify your life from the philosophy of Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu, literally translated as Old Master, is a Chinese legendary and historical figure who is considered to be the founder of Taoism. Taoism is a philosophy which preaches that the secret to a simple life is not force, fret or struggle to control and manipulate reality, but instead to relax, smile and go with the flow, allowing things to unfold naturally. At the core of Taoism is the concept of the Tao. The word Tao is defined as a path or way that, if followed, leads to a life of simplicity and harmony. Taoists believe that the Tao is the driving engine of creation, both the source and essence of all things. It encourages us to be in touch with our inner selves, for it's when you know who you really are that you become one with nature doing things in a natural way with no unnecessary complications, thus achieving the truest simplicity in life. Lao Tzu is also credited as the writer of Taoism's most sacred text, the Tao Te Ching. It is packed with his remarkable wisdom and messages of peace, resilience and living cohesively that reminds us what really matters in life. He is a central figure in Chinese culture but his words can apply to people all over the world, which is why in this video, we bring you four ways to simplify your life from the wisdom of Lao Tzu. Number one, cultivate the three treasures of Taoism. Lao Tzu says, simplicity, patience, compassion. These three are your greatest treasures. Lao Tzu outlines what he calls the three treasures, three values or qualities of mind that are key to living a simple life of virtue, integrity and living in natural harmony with the Tao. These three treasures are compassion, moderation and humility. As simple as it sounds, cultivating all the three jewels does not come easy. The first of the three treasures is compassion which also means love or kindness and is one of the most prominent beliefs in Taoism. It is selfless love for all others which includes giving others happiness as well as removing their suffering. Most people have love and compassion that's very conditional in nature and the transaction goes something like this. If you behave the way I like, I'll treat you well. If you don't, then I won't treat you well. When you put such conditions in place, you feed off judgment, greed, competition and negative comparison. When this happens, compassion goes out the window and we become disconnected and alienated from our fellow man, which almost inevitably leads to isolation, conflict and potential disaster. The compassion called for by Taoists is impartial, expects nothing in return and is not possessive. People who only have conditional love are selfish and they tend to have frequent conflicts with others. One can practice compassion in many ways, starting from the simplest day-to-day -day activities. It could be as simple as remembering to smile and say hi to your colleagues after entering your workplace or holding the door open for the person behind us, etc. Every morning thinking about how we can help the people around us, how you can practice compassion by your speech, actions and thoughts without any exceptions. If we're more compassionate, we find more happiness and less conflict in life. The second jewel of Taoism is moderation. Taoism believes that everything in life is connected and thus allowing ourselves to focus on our fear and greed causes imbalance and will adversely affect our deepest selves and everyone around us. When we want something expensive, we tend to get stressed and work harder than we normally do to attain it. After we attain that thing, we then need to work even harder to maintain it or the lifestyle it allows. And then we become stressed about losing that too. On the other hand, 
Adopting a moderate lifestyle breeds simplicity. Simplicity is all about knowing exactly what you want and critically what you don't want. When we live in moderation, when we recognize our needs are few, we can relax and be present. The best way to practice a moderate lifestyle is by being more mindful of how much we spend and how many resources we use. Once we have an estimate, we can then find ways to be more frugal. It could mean doing the simplest things like not wasting your food or not throwing away unused clothes but instead donating or recycling them. By not leaving the tap running while brushing your teeth or cleaning your car with a bucket of hot soapy water instead of driving to the car wash. People who live in moderation tend to use little for themselves but are happy to spend lots on others. Humility is the third jewel of Taoism. In Chinese, this jewel of humility is translated as dare not be first. Not concerning oneself with being the first to do something is the Taoist way to avoid premature death. Competing will not only shorten your life, but often requires too much risk and energy which will only increase unrelenting stubbornness, which in turn can create conflict and even ruin relationships. On the other hand, when we yield, meaning when we let go of what we want and let others have what they want, enables us to choose a content and quiet life over a competitive and difficult one. So a humble person is a person who is happy to yield to others. A yielding person will not only give more to others and take less for themselves, but will also never show off or step on others. Instead, they praise others' goodness to raise them up. They're not interested in fighting for the top spot. If there's someone else who's more worthy of the position, they would happily yield to them. They care about benefiting all things without conflict. These three invaluable treasures, compassion, moderation, and humility, are gifts from Lao Tzu. And when we cultivate each of the jewels, we will not only bring simplicity, happiness, love, and success into our life, but we also bring peace and prosperity to the world. Number two, go with the flow. According to Lao Tzu, when nothing is done, nothing is left undone. One of the most important aspects of Taoism is the idea of going with the flow. This teaching is best explained with the concept of Wu Wai, which can be translated to in exertion, in action, or effortless action. A more accurate translation, though, might be non-forcing, for Wu Wai urges you not to fight against our life conditions and instead allow things to happen as they naturally would. Imagine life as a river. When you do nothing, the current of the river will effortlessly take you along, moving you forward without you breaking a sweat. Doing nothing doesn't result in you being stuck in one place. Instead, the river takes you along to new places and situations. This is an effortless way of living life and the way by which you can enjoy the ride the most. If you give in to impatience and try to swim with the current to get there faster, you will only waste more energy reaching what you would have reached anyway. Or worse, if you fight against the path of life and swim against the current, it might well take all of your energy, only to lead to limited and disappointing results. The concept of Wu Wai then urges you to simply go with the flow of the river. In our current day and age, we want a lot of things, and more often than not, we want them to happen right now. The most encouraged, and thus the most common mindset when it comes to life, stresses on working hard and taking action, no matter how difficult life is, to get where you need to be. When following this advice, it's no wonder that we wear ourselves out, risk burnouts and exhaustion, and have a tendency to rush things to get them to the finish line. When we rush through projects and force ourselves to work on them through setbacks and hardships, they rarely turn out as good as we want them to. Plus, we are so often focused on getting through our tasks, we often deny ourselves the rest in those times we need to keep going afterwards. When we try to meet every deadline imposed on us regardless of our circumstances, it eats away at both our well-being 
and the quality of our work. Additionally, when we're encouraged to push through unfavorable circumstances, we are at increased risk of making errors and compromising quality. It's clear that pushing yourself to work irrespective of the circumstances is one of the hardest and most exhausting ways to live and often brings limited results. Taoism, instead, suggests that we give up this rush and surrender ourselves to the natural flow of life, the Tao. Now, this doesn't mean that we refuse to work or sit back lazily and never do anything. Indeed, understanding Wu Wai as laziness would be a gross misinterpretation. Wu Wai does encourage you to take action, but to do so only when it will be effortless rather than forceful. Wu Wai encourages you to turn away from unfavorable life circumstances and encourages you to embrace favorable ones whenever they may come. If the opportunity for a project, like a job offer in a new city arises and you feel calm, prepared and even excited, go for it. Imagine yourself in this position. If the prospect of a new job doesn't stress you out and the move to a new city is a welcome change, then you'd be acting without effort if you took it. Opportunities such as the job offer that make you feel calm, prepared and even excited are the kind of actions you want to embrace. Those are the kinds of actions that will breathe life into you instead of sucking it out of you. By taking action at the point in your life where it will be the most impactful and efficient, you truly become an act instead of merely doing it. In other words, at the right time, an action can take hold in the most meaningful and defining way. On the other hand, when an opportunity or obligation feels too stressful for you to keep up with, take a step back. For example, when a promotion at work comes up at a time where you feel unable to handle the extra responsibilities, deny it. Take a step back. When you don't know what to do, just keep doing what you're already doing. New opportunities will come when life presents you with a chance that you believe will be good and fulfilling for you to take on. When you're unsure of what you want when it comes to work, just keep working where you are and your feelings will figure themselves out in time. And when life presents an opportunity to you, like a promotion or job offer that makes you feel good and excited and feels right, take it. When we learn how to embrace the concept of Wu Wai and learn how to go with the flow, we reach achievements in the simplest way possible. To simplify your life, don't force action. Let action come to you. By flowing along the river, you'll get where you eventually need to be, just without the struggle. Number three, let go. In the words of Lao Tzu, if you realize that all things change, there's nothing you will try to hold on to. If you're not afraid of dying, there is nothing you cannot achieve. Taoism teaches us that nothing in life is constant, permanent, or forever. When the caterpillar learns to get rid of how it's used to living, it can transform into a butterfly. Just like the caterpillar, humans are in a constant state of change, and so is everything around us. To keep life simple, Taoism tells us to embrace change and impermanence by learning to let go. Change and impermanence generally scares us. We spend most of our time trying to avoid having to face change and we tend to want the things we enjoy to last as long as possible. When life then inevitably doesn't work out the way we want it to, we feel powerless. In order to ignore this feeling, we tend to focus only on what we think we can control. This often results in clinging on to those things that we pretend to control, like a job that's making you miserable, or holding on to a fading relationship, and so on. We're incredibly attached to life and its temporary circumstances, to the point where we don't even acknowledge the fact that anything could be different in the future. This attachment results in a lot more difficulty and pain in life, for when the inevitable change or even end of something does come, we are entirely unprepared to deal with it. For example, imagine you're in an unhealthy relationship. You fully realize that you don't enjoy living and spending time together any longer, but you've been together for so long, you barely know how to be alone. 
The possibility of having to find a new place to live and figuring out how to manage by yourself is daunting enough for you to try and deny your feelings instead. You look for any sign that love is still there and refuse to let go of a relationship that you know in truth is already long over. Thus, when the time inevitably comes when your partner ends up breaking up with you first, you'll feel more unprepared than ever. Because of the fact that we're afraid of change despite its inevitability, we tend to deny it instead of embrace it. And when the change comes, it leaves us feeling caught off guard, distressed, and sometimes even hopeless. Not only that, those negative feelings often distract us from any new opportunities that might arise. But change needn't feel like a punishment. Instead, letting go and embracing the change might be the answer to many of our problems and leave us freer than we ever could imagine. Every change or end comes with a new beginning. Those who haven't mastered the art of letting go tend to be preoccupied with the doors that have already closed, trying to pry them open again, to walk back through them, and getting nowhere as a result. This refusal to let things go and move on is like swimming against the current of a river instead of accepting where it will take us. To let go, on the other hand, is going with the flow. It means to be able to accept the closing of doors and look forward to new, open ones. Like how after a relationship is over, you can look forward to having more spare time, more individuality, a newfound focus on personal life goals, and eventually the possibility of a new, better relationship. Letting go means to embrace the freedom that changes and ends might bring you and to look for new opportunities whenever you can. Letting go is the gateway to living our most harmonious and simplest life possible. To live our life in the easiest, happiest and most free way we can, we have to acknowledge that change and death are the only constants in life. We need to avoid forming unhealthy attachments to our desires and learn how to appreciate what we have in our present moment without clinging onto the idea that it's going to be there forever. Number four, find your balance. In our final quote from Lao Tzu for this video, he says, Tao engenders one. One engenders two. Two engenders three. Three engenders all things. All things carry the yin while embracing the yang. Neutralizing energy brings them into harmony. One of the most important concepts within Taoism is the concept of yin and yang. Yin and yang stand for two opposing forces. Yin represents a negative or passive force, also seen as the feminine force. And yang represents a positive, active force, also seen as the masculine force. The symbol of yin and yang represents yin as a dark or black droplet and yang as a white droplet. Together, they make the circle perfectly whole. Their balance, as seen in the symbol, is perfectly harmonious, with just as much yin as there is yang. Neither one is superior to the other. These forces can be found everywhere and in everything, as everything in nature tends to be a bit of both in order to thrive. Think of day and night, wet and dry, cold and warm, dead and alive, etc. All things need their opposite in order to exist, and all things have aspects of both yin and yang, with nothing being inherently one or the other. Yin and yang changes with time. As one of the forces increases, the other decreases, and vice versa. As nature is a constant balance of opposites, so are you. Sometimes we use one side of our personality to excess at the expense of the other. This makes life unnecessarily hard and tiresome. The easiest lives consist of balance and harmony. We are used to perceiving opposites as one being good and the other being bad, such as preferring light over dark or active over passive. As a result of this view, we tend to try to lean towards one side, completely dismissing the other. Someone who is very passive and never dares to act may get stuck in unfavorable situations, 
while someone who's very active may rush into equally unfavorable situations. Both need to lean in to their opposite side more in order to reach a harmonious balance. We have to realize that neither force of an opposition is inherently worse than the other, and we need to learn to embrace both. For example, someone who's too kind may get taken advantage of and needs to learn how to become more assertive. However, someone who's too aggressive will put people off, leading to the same result. Just as light shines brightest after darkness, so can your best traits only excel if you're also able to display the opposite when the right situation calls for it. And thus, yin and yang represents finding a balance within yourself that grants you the best of both worlds. Finding balance goes for more than just character traits. You can't live a physically active lifestyle without taking enough rest. Everything in your body is interdependent. When your mind is being uncared for, it performs badly, and in turn, so will your body and vice versa. Thus, a healthy mindset is as important for your physical health as a good diet, and the same can be said in reverse for your mental health. Finding balance means examining your physical health when you're currently focused on improving your mental health, and vice versa. In order to live a simple and happy life, let your yin and yang truly complement each other. Be in complete harmony with yourself and the world. As we mentioned at the beginning, this video is brought to you by Masterworks. For most people in modern society, the biggest barrier to a harmonious life is money. It's easy to say you're going to go with the flow until it impacts your basic needs, which having no money is guaranteed to do. So ideally, we'd have our money working for us so we can focus our energy on higher pursuits. But in 2022, that's easier said than done. Most ways of passively growing your money, like investing in the stock market, have been suffering this year. But with inflation basically taking money out of your bank account, it's daunting to sit around and do nothing. That's why we're excited to tell you about Masterworks. It's a unique platform that lets you invest in contemporary art by legends like Picasso and Banksy, but for a fraction of the full price. According to Citibank, art has a very low correlation to other investments like stocks, so when they dip, your art investments may not. And if inflation has you worried, art is a compelling option. The last time inflation was this high, it appreciated more than gold and real estate at an average of 33% per year. Since we're talking about investment, and if you're investing your money, your investments can fluctuate. They can go up as well as down. And we talking about this doesn't mean we're giving any financial advice. But what Masterworks is doing is really fascinating, and it's also in their best interest to get the highest return from selling their art. Which is why, from the six paintings they've sold, Masterworks has delivered an average return of 29% to their investors, including a sale just last month for 33% return. Most wealth managers and experts would tell you that you shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket, meaning that you should diversify your portfolio. And investing in art is definitely an interesting way to do that. So if you're interested in Masterworks and wish to gain priority access, click on the link in the description. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to check out our full Philosophies for Life playlist. And for more videos to help you find success and happiness using ancient philosophical wisdom, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.